Hey everyone, today we're going to be testing out the Angway Engine Pro. If you guys seen my video about a month or so ago on the Angway EP2 Pro, this is their upgraded version with regenerative braking and hydraulic brakes and a few other cool features that we'll be talking about later on in the video. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that I noticed my coupon code expired for the Angway EP2 Pro. I reached out to them. They did reinstate that $250 off coupon and as of me currently filming this video, to get that Keller bike off their website using my coupon code, you can get it for $918. And the $250 off coupon code that they gave me for the Engine Pro, you can get it for around $1,400 right now. So if you guys are interested in picking one of these up, make sure you check out the coupon code and the link down below in the description. It will be an affiliate link. If you guys do use that, I will make a small commission at no extra cost to you, but that's what helps this channel out. And I do wanna mention that they did send these bikes over for a review, but as always, we're gonna put it through the tests and see how this bike performs in real world testing. So let's get into it guys, thanks for watching. I always forget something guys, when I filmed the main part of this video, you'll see in there that I was using the Rock Rose bag. Well, I reached out to them, they did send me the Angway bag because it looked similar to the Rock Bros bag and I wanted to check it out. So I'm gonna show you that here real quick guys, both of their bags in case you guys are interested. It's a lot cheaper than the Rock Bros bag that I use. Now I do wanna mention that the quality is Pretty good on this bag, but it is a little bit lesser of a quality than the Rock Bros bag that I do use. You can get this for about $83 on Amazon, but very, very similar in features to the Rock Bros bag. You can see here that you can unzip this, gives you tons of storage, but you can also unzip the lower zipper, just like the Rock Bros bag. And that'll lift this up to give you more storage in there. And then on the side here, you do have the flip down paneers. So you got your pouch there that you can open and then your paneers come down. So you got plenty of room there. This is a 17 to a 35 liter bag. And you got your little bungee there that you can attach maybe somewhere down here to hold this bag down. But this feels pretty good. But like I said, the Rock, Rock Rose bag is just slightly thicker material, I believe on these paneers. Um, and it seems like the top stays up just a little bit better, but the inside of the bag looks the same as far as storage goes and nice padded inside. They do actually give you a rain cover, which Rock Bros did not, which covers the paneers and everything to keep it waterproof. It, and this one does have a netting over the cup holder, not quite sure why. You could store stuff in there instead of a cup, I guess. Um, I guess it's a pretty cool feature. And then over here, this other bag is the Angway 7 liter bag. Just a really nice, lightweight, cheap bag. Um, pretty decent. I like the material on it. It does have a zippered pocket up top here that they give you a rain cover for it as well. And then if you open it up, you do have a decent bit of storage in there. There's no pockets or anything, but it's it's pretty padded so nice little bag there that you could pick up for around $14 on Amazon currently I believe it's on sale it says it's the lowest price of for a while on there but I'll put links to both of those down below in the description as well if you guys are interested and those will also be affiliate links so I will make a small commission from those as well now let's get into the original video on the engine pro hey what's going on everyone so today we're checking out the Angway engine pro and we're gonna be testing this bike out, seeing what it can do on some hills. But one feature that I'm really excited to try out that I don't have on any of my other e-bikes is the regenerative braking that this bike has. Now this is uh, rated on their website as a 750 watt motor, but we're gonna be testing that out in the video today, seeing what kind of power this bike has. If you've seen my first video of the Angway EP2 Pro. That bike was a pretty nice bike, but it was a little bit lacking in power. But we're gonna test out the regen braking starting right now. So we're going downhill and for this regen to work, you have to be going over 12 miles per hour. So you gotta be either in PAS zero or PAS one for it to even engage and work. If you're in PAS two through five, it will not engage. But it slowed me down there, didn't have to hit the brakes at all. So let me try to show you guys here. First of all, I gotta take these sunglasses off because I cannot see this display. Oh, that's way better. This display is actually really, really nice and really easy to see, but with polarized sunglasses on, it's a little bit difficult. I'll show you guys right here on the display, right in the center, it tells you your wattage. So when you hit the throttle, 
you'll see the wattage go up. But when you're going downhill and you're, like I said, in either PAS zero or PAS one and you go over 12 miles per hour, that's supposed to start going down into the negatives and start regening power back into the battery. So this is a very long hill here and we're just gonna, let's go try PAS zero and see what kind of power we can get built back up. Now we're gonna do this over a longer test too once the battery dies, but there's 13, 14, 15. So it didn't kick in until about 15 miles per hour, but you can see there, I'm at 450 watts, 495, putting that back into the motor, 513. So around 500 watts and I could feel it kicking in and out. Probably might have something to do with the battery being fully charged right now. Um, it felt like it was kicking in and out slightly, but still had to use the brakes, but that was a pretty steep hill. So we're gonna try to just pedal here normally in PAS zero to see what happens once we get it past 12 miles an hour and see if it's really hard to pedal. 13, so it just kicked in, 17 watts there. Um, a little bit hard to pedal. Yeah, you could feel a little bit of resistance, 50 some watts at 14 mile an hour, but I'm going downhill now and it's ga gaining, picking up now. So now if you hit the throttle in PAS1, I think it might disable it. We'll have to test that out on a further hill up here, a longer one. I'm gonna test it and then hit the throttle and see if it disengages it. If it does, that'll be kind of cool. So a few things I wanna mention, and I don't think there's a way to, uh, to change it, but the throttle is limited to whatever PAS level you're in. So if you're in, hold on guys, a little bright. All right guys, that is much better now I can see. So basically the throttle is limited to whatever PAS level you're in. So if PAS level is only outputting 100 watts, the throttle is only gonna give you 100 watts of power, which is about what it's at right now in PAS one. Bump it up to two and it's real nice and gradual starting out and the throttle is nice and gradual when you hit it. But like I said, it's limited there. So you're not gonna have full throttle unless you're in a higher PAS level like PAS5. And that'll give you full throttle. And there's one other thing I noticed too that's really weird about this bike. And I don't know why it's like this because it's opposite of any of my other bikes. And that is when you're pedaling and pedal assist is actually kicked in. When you hit the throttle, you don't get full power of the throttle. But if you quit pedaling and you hit the throttle in PAS5, then you do get full power over 800 watts. So I really don't like that because when you're going up a steep hill and you actually wanna put pressure on them pedals to help the bike up the hill, if you need to use the throttle, it's not gonna give you full throttle and also it's not gonna give you full power when you're pedaling. I don't know why it doesn't give you full power when you're pedaling. Um, that's one thing they really need to change because in my area here with some, some steeper hills, which we will be testing out here in a few minutes, but I might need that full power. So to get that full power, I'm gonna have to stop pedaling and use the throttle. But then at that point, you risk overheating your controller because you're not using any of your own power and it's putting your controller under a heavier load, putting your battery under a heavier load and your motor, you risk burning something out or damaging your motor by not putting any of your own power in it on steep hills. So. Uh, we'll, we'll test it out. We'll see if there's enough power with just the pedal assist the way they have this set. Let's go ahead, test out some of these PAS levels, see what they can do. And we'll test out the regen braking some more and things like that. And um, I don't know, just see what this bike's about. So there's a lot of nice features on this bike. There's a lot of upgrades compared to their EP2 Pro. This bike has Logan hydraulic disc brakes, which is really nice. It makes it a lot more easy for your braking with one finger or two. Uh, the display on this bike is way nicer than the EP2 Pro. One thing I want to mention is when I unboxed this thing, the manual that came with it for the display was actually for the EP2 Pro. They had the wrong manual in there. You can download the right manual either before you buy the bike if you wanted to uh, check out some of the specs and stuff of the bike or how it works. Or just keep watching this video to see how, how the bike works. But right now I'm in PAS2, pulling me up this little incline, no problem. We're gonna go up into three right here. And you could go in and actually change the settings on some of these modes 
and we're gonna do that to see if it makes a difference later on. So I'm going down a slight hill now, so I'm gonna put it in PAS1, but the regen is working. It's showing I'm at 100%. Now I'm not sure how that is on the battery when your battery's actually full and it's regening. I don't know if it's putting extra power in the battery or if it's just uh, able to limit that somehow. Not quite sure, guys. So 53 watts, I'm going 14 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour. And it is slowing me down pretty good. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't hit the brakes yet. Usually I'm in the brakes by now to slow down. I probably will hit them down here. And sounds pretty good, motor sounds good. I have not hit them yet. Oh, so let's try to hit the throttle now and see if it disables that. Yeah, so it actually does disable the regen if you hit the throttle in PAS1, so that's nice. And it's back in again. And you can hear that motor regening. Hit the throttle, you can hear that it, it's not regening now. Let go to the throttle. And it is regening. So that's pretty nice. Let's go into PAS2 here. Ah, oh, PAS2 is regening too, that's weird. PAS3, not regening, pulling the brakes, not regening, but I'm gonna go back down to two. So, I don't know why it's regening in two. Uh, on, the, on the site, and I believe on Amazon, it says that it regens in PAS zero and one only, but it seems to be regening in PAS two as well. So, something to keep in mind, guys. I don't know if this is just specific to the one I got, and they're gonna change things in the future because Ah, another bug. Because <laughs> one thing I want to tell you guys is they do, over time, do upgrades to these bikes, change things, uh, change things in the settings. So I'm just going over what this bike has. Currently, the models that are shipping now. And like I said, with the delays in the market and things like that on parts, sometimes they switch out parts. Sometimes they make these bikes better than the ones that I review. Um, sometimes they got to switch different brands on certain things, but that's with every company across the board right now with all the delays and back orders on things. So let's go ahead up this hill here that I usually do most of my tests on. It's pretty long. It should drain that battery down pretty good because right now it's saying I'm still at 100%. Uh, not sure. I don't think I could switch that over to voltage to see. Let's go in the display here. Now it doesn't look like you could switch it over to voltage to read the voltage. That would have been nice because I can get a little bit more accurate reading being able to read voltage. All right, let's see what kind of power this bike has. All right, here we go guys. So I'm in PAS1 right now and you can see I'm pedaling and it's putting out 104 watts. If I quit pedaling, it's putting out 138 watts with the throttle. So you can see it's more power with the throttle than in PAS. This is PAS5. Maximum it's going to output with pedaling and PAS5 is 578 watts. If I quit pedaling and hit the throttle, it'll go up to around 850. So it's more power when you're not pedaling and you could feel it. As soon as you start pedaling, you could feel that power drop a little bit. So I don't know why that's like that. That's actually backwards from the way it should be because you want more power you don't want the power to drop as you start pedaling because that's going to make people want to quit pedaling to get more power from the motor but then you're going to actually have less power because you're not putting in your own power with that being said i'm walking up this hill no problem pedaling and i think i'm it's hard for me to see what gear i'm in because my phone's actually in front of the the gear shifter there but that would have been nice if anything, if it limited you while you were pedaling and then gave you full power when you hit the throttle, that would have been really nice to see. So hopefully that's something they could change in the future. It is pulling me up around here, no problem. This is a pretty long hill. Uh, batteries down to about 86% right now, it says. 85. So we're just gonna go through the different PAS levels up here when we hit some more level ground and see how fast this bike is. Now it's advertised to go 28 miles per hour, I believe. But honestly, I don't think it's gonna do that. I have it turned up all the way in the settings to I believe 31 miles per hour. But I think it's capped out at around 20 from my first initial test. 
So we're gonna see here, this is a pretty long straight stretch. This is just pedaling. I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into the pedals. 16 miles an hour on GPS, 17. So now I'm gonna quit pedaling. So about 17 miles per hour, I would say, with pedaling in PAS5. Now if I quit pedaling and just use the throttle, now I'm going faster because it's giving me more wattage. 20, 21, 22. So about 22 miles per hour with just throttle. We'll test this out again later on on a longer straight stretch. So this bike does seem to have more power from what I can remember than the Angway EP2 Pro. Slightly more power but it's not gonna be a speed demon up hills. So I'm actually putting a pretty good bit of effort into it right now. And that's because it's only giving me 555 watts of power. If I quit pedaling and use the throttle, it'll give me more power. But like I said, that puts more of a strain on your motor, your battery, your controller. So yeah, you're gonna have to work a little bit extra on these pedals if you guys are going up some hills. So the display on this bike's pretty intuitive, guys. You go into the display settings, you could see it's really easy to understand and easy to reset your trip, things like that. You can go into the advanced settings. Now this is where I did turn the wheel sides down to 22 inches and so far the odometer has been pretty accurate. So we're gonna leave it there for now. Speed limit is set at 31 miles per hour, which is the max that you could set it to. And it is definitely not able to reach that speed. You have different modes here, sport, normal, and eco. Um, you'd think sport mode would go the fastest. Not sure why it's doing that. Let's go into normal mode there and see what that does. Um, don't wanna change those. Now here is where you can go in and set your different PAS levels. You can see one is at 22% all the way up to 100. That's what it was set at from the factory. I think five was on 99, I did change that one to 100. But you can actually change this to have three different levels of assist all the way up to nine different levels of assist. So if you want a lot of different adjustability there, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna keep mine set on zero to five for now. I'll probably change that in a little bit just to see if it makes a difference. Um, slow start was on zero but I did just turn it up to three to see if that makes a difference with speed. ACF, not sure what that is. I couldn't find anything in the manual on that. There's only two settings on there, 50 and zero. And I tried both, didn't notice a difference either way. So I'm just gonna put it back to where it was set. Cruise control, I turned off. That is activated by holding the throttle down for around eight seconds and it activates. And we're gonna go back and try it now and see if that setting that the slow start made any difference. PAS5. And still about 500 and some watts. So now I did reach 21 miles an hour there. when I was pedaling, so that's faster than the 17, so maybe changing that to normal did make a difference. Let's go down into regen. I'm gonna just stay in two. Regening nicely, 400 watt gain. Not using the brakes. Now, this is one thing I'm really excited about for the regen feature, and that is to save your brakes, because not only does this thing have great hydraulic disc brakes but this is going to save you from using your brakes a lot when you're going down hills trying to slow down if you have a lot of hills in your area now it's not going to be so good for just level ground and and uh you know hurrying up trying to switch down to slow down that would have been nice to see if they could have incorporated when you hit the brakes that it would start to regen so that if you just tapped your brake it would regen no matter what pas level you're in like some scooters that i have that would have been really awesome or even a separate lever that you could engage like my high boy s2 pro scooter that would have been cool to see too but 
it just does it automatically when you're in PAS 0, 1, or 2. So yeah, it doesn't seem like it made any difference as far as power going up those hills. But we will definitely have to test this speed out again in some different modes because I'm really curious to see if it's going to make a difference. All right, guys, so I think what Eco, Normal, and Sport mode does is just limit your output on the throttle. In Eco mode on PAS5, it's putting out about 448 watts max with the throttle. If I pedal, you can see it's giving me more wattage now while I pedal 544 watts. So now we're going to change that and go into normal mode. And see how many watts it puts out now with just throttle. Four forty-eight. Let me turn it off and turn it back on. Maybe it needs to be turned off every time you change it. So now it's giving me six hundred and eighty-nine watts with just throttle. Now let's go in and change it to sport mode. Turn it off. And now it's over 700 watts, 800 watts almost. So I believe the sport eco and normal mode basically just limits you throttle wise. So we're gonna stay in sport mode so I get the full maximum output of throttle. This is gonna be some up and down roly polies here. So we're gonna see what we can do with just throttle only and see what kind of speed we can maintain. 24. I just felt a kick in, so it did kick in at around 23. We'll see when it cuts again. Going up a slight hill, cresting the hill, going back down the other side. Still producing, still, uh, it just cut me at 23 watts, but it's still producing 100 and some watts. I meant 23 miles per hour, sorry guys. So yeah, it is getting me past the 17 or 20 that it was earlier, but definitely not 28. So now we're gonna just do some pedaling here. And we're gonna see what kind of speed we can maintain with just pedaling. Now this is going downhill a little bit and then it's gonna level off. So if anything, I should definitely hit 28 miles per hour here if it can do that. So it's a 24 and it's only outputting 48 watts. So it's limiting me here for sure. So it's maintaining around 22 miles per hour. This is pretty level. So definitely not a 28 mile per hour bike guys. Just keep that in mind. Now, 28 miles per hour is not legal anyway in almost every area in the United States. So this is gonna be perfect for most people at a max of 20 miles per hour if you do end up raising your speed above that to a class 3 just make sure you know the laws in your area because you don't want to get in trouble so I've been sitting here a few minutes letting the battery equalize right now I'm at 75% battery we're gonna go down this long hill here with regen and see if that changes really just gonna let it regen down the hill the whole way and see if that changes It'll probably show you it changing, but I'm curious if it's going to hold that charge once I stop and let it equalize. You can see it went up from 75 to 85 percent, 86, but that's because it's probably showing a higher wattage right now. When I get to the bottom, I'll sit there for a few minutes, let the battery equalize again, and we'll see if I gained anything. We're just going to let it go until it quits regening. Still giving me 16 watts and it's done right under 13 is where it stopped. 
So I've been sitting here a few minutes and it's been fluctuating between 78 and 77. So I'd say I gained at least two to 3% coming down that hill. Um, it should be equalized out now. So you do get a little bit of regen power but if I was riding, riding this in a normal scenario, once I got about three quarter of the way down, I would have let the regen go and just drifted the rest of the way. That way I had a good start for the next hill. So in reality, I probably only would have gained maybe 2%, but it is showing that the regen does work. So this bike does have a rear suspension right here. You could see how it pivots on the frame and it has a little shock here. I think that might be, I don't know if it's spring or hydraulic, but it is a little stiff. It doesn't give you a whole lot of suspension. I'm 165 pounds, and that's just me bouncing on it slightly. Now, if you do hit a lot of big bumps, I mean, it does take some of it out. You could hear a little bit of a squeak there. That's me bouncing on it with my full weight, so it does take some of it out. <laughs> but I think it's squeaking because these are just, uh, I mean, there's no, like, bearings or anything in there maybe just bushings but um it does take a little bit out not quite sure i think a sus suspension seat post would be way better than than this so i popped this top of the shock out and the way it's mounted between these brackets here it kind of recesses in i'm going to put a little bit of grease on these or some kind of lubricant to just lubricate these up because i think that's where i'm getting some of the squeaking and also they had two washers on this side of the bolt this is the not the um, screw side but the bolt side that's really long so i took both washers off of this side and added one washer to each of these on the other side because there was no washers on this side and it allowed this to not be so tight because it was pushing this squeezing it too tight and not allowing this bracket to move but now i'm going to show you guys that this rear suspension is actually pretty good now and i get a lot more travel on it and less resistance so this might be better than a suspension seat post now i know i said earlier in the video when this was stiff and i showed you guys when i was bouncing on it how stiff it was but now it is a lot softer by me greasing these up and actually adjusting this right a lot softer and a lot more travel now and i'm barely putting any of my weight this is just my weight of it on there now so before it wasn't even moving when i was putting just my weight on only when i was bouncing but now lots of travel there compared to before so you guys might want to take that apart and make sure it's adjusted right and grease that up make sure you put loctite back on those bolts when you put them back in and make sure they're tight i'm no professional mechanic here but this is just my experience with my bike on the front we do have a suspension with a lockout on the right however there is no adjustability on the lockout as far as different clicks goes and on the left, we do have a preload adjuster. Suspension does feel pretty nice on the front. No complaints about that. Right now I'm in PAS5. We're gonna go up this hill here and then we'll talk a little bit more about the bike once we get up here in this field. So some of my 500 watt bikes peak out at 800 and some watts, but it gives you that wattage while you're pedaling, which makes it a lot nicer for going up hills. This will give you the peak output of 800 and some watts. However, you can't put your own power in if you want to get that, that uh, peak wattage. You can only use the throttle, which I'm doing right here, throttle only. You can see it's taking me up this small hill. No problem, this is an incline here. So I do feel I'm going to have to put it head to head and do some side to side comparisons with the um, EP2 Pro but as far as my memory serves me right I believe it's does feel more powerful than that bike and it's also uh, a lot more expensive than that one if you guys haven't seen my review on that one make sure you guys check it out and I believe my coupon code for $250 off does still work on that bike here's that suspension don't know if you guys can see it working or not I'm gonna have to downshift here help it out through this field so yeah this is a little bit hard one-handed guys coming up through here with this bike 
Uh, let's do some throttle only. Front suspension's working pretty good. All right guys, so let's check out a lot of the specs and features of this bike. And I gotta tell you guys, I'm really thankful for the beautiful day we're having here. This is October, weather or winter's coming and I'm really limited on days. I still have a few bikes that I have to make videos on and I'm really gonna be limited pretty soon on days of me getting out and doing long ride tests like this. And I'll probably have to switch it up and start doing some more live streams, maybe indoors and things like that. Um, answering some questions and stuff. So that wind just blew, which leads me to the first point about this bike that I didn't like about it when I unboxed it. And that is the kickstand seems almost a little bit too long for the bike. It is adjustable and it is a heavy duty kickstand, so that's nice, but it's all the way adjusted up in. And it seems like the bike with it all the way adjusted seems sits a little bit too straight. Now my electric step through was like this as well. And I complained about that when I reviewed that and that quick kickstand is not adjustable but this one it is adjustable however the bike sits a little bit too upright and I fear that parked the wrong way or a little gust of wind might knock it over so I'm not quite sure um, maybe because this frame and this bracket sits a little bit lower here where it's mounted hopefully maybe they can do something about that in the future maybe shorten up the kickstand or maybe move this bracket up or something that would prevent that issue so up here on the handlebars we have the control pad here which is a pretty nice control pad you have your power button here your up and down pas levels you have your button here to turn on your headlight and tail light and you also have the info button which shifts through your max speed average mile per hour time odometer and then you have your trip meter here which you can reset in the settings the display, I already showed you guys a little bit about that, but it is very bright, very nice. Shows you your wattage output, your miles, and all that. I really do like the display on this. It's one of my favorites. Next to the control pad, you have your thumb throttle here on the left-hand side, and that is because you have an eight-speed trigger shifter over here. It's behind my cell phone holder, but with this style trigger shifter, it is nice having the throttle on the left. The hand grips are locked on pretty good. They don't spin. And they are a pretty nice um, faux leather, almost rubberized. They almost have a rubberized feel to them, but I really like these grips. They're, they're pretty nice in my opinion. I will be leaving those on for sure. For stopping power, this bike's using a set of Logan hydraulic disc brakes that are really nice. Coming down to the Logan hydraulic calipers, but it does only have 160 millimeter rotors on both the front and back. That would have been nice to see 180 millimeter rotors. No big deal, still great stopping power, still pretty good hydraulic brakes. So that's a plus in my book. Behind the display, you do have a little USB dongle here for charging your cell phone up if your battery goes dead, which is always really nice to see, especially up here. So you don't have to run your cord way up from down there or anything. The stem of this bike is adjustable. I've been riding with it all the way down just because it's easier for me filming, but you can adjust this stem up pretty far for taller riders or down for shorter riders. It has a really nice clamping system and locking mechanism on the handlebars for folding those down. This is one of my favorite styles on a folding handlebar because it's really secure, easy to adjust. So no problems with that. Coming down from the eight speed shifter, it leads down to a 13 to 28 freewheel. And that's kind of odd because I don't think I've ever had one that was a 13 tooth gear. I could be wrong, but it does feel like it's pretty nice at high speeds. You don't feel like you're running out of pedal too much. We'll test it out a little more later on. It's using a Shimano Altus derailleur, which is a step up above entry level. So that's nice to see. Coming up the chain, we have a set of pro wheel cranks, a 52 tooth chain ring, and a set of Welgo folding aluminum pedals. The suspension on this bike is an HLT 100. Like I said, not quite sure if that's a spring or hydraulic. I looked online, it looked like shocks like this were hydraulic, but I can't be a 100% sure of that. Right here is where the frame folds. It has a locking mechanism here for the latch. 
then you can undo that, fold the bike in half, and put it in your car easily. This bike does have a set of metal fenders. They are still fenders, so if they do get nicked up, they will rust. And it does have a really nice heavy duty rack on the back, which is aluminum. So that's nice to see that they kept this aluminum to keep the weight down a little bit. The rear motor you can see is branded as a 750 watt motor in the back. According to my testing today, it's putting out about 860 watts peak. So it's probably more like a 500 watt nominal motor. Coming down the front of the bike, you can see the wiring is wrapped sporadically down through the front. It would have been nice to see a full wrap all the way down, but they are wrapped pretty nicely um, no complaints about that no stray wires you have your suspension on the front here with your lockout on the right like i said and the preload on the left the bike has a star junction wuxing light on the front which is pretty nice and it does have a tail light on the back however it's not the suit it's not the brightest tail light and it's also not a brake light that would have been nice to see this to be a little bit brighter and also be a brake light when you pull the brake lever but it is not now for power here this bike's using a 12.8 amp hour battery inside the frame here the controller is stated on their website to be an 18 amp controller however i can't verify that because i did not take it out and check another thing i love about this bike is it is setting on a set of mag wheels so you don't have to worry about spokes becoming loose over time and constantly having to adjust spokes so that is really nice that they do have the mag wheels on this model this bike's sitting on a set of 20 by 4 inch cst bft fat tires the cable management down here going around this shock could have been a little bit nicer i mean it's it's nice and tight wrapped around there and there really isn't much they can do with that shock there the seat on this bike is like a gel seat it is pretty comfortable so i'm really happy with the seat after riding about 10 9 miles today so far 9.1 on the display i have no problems with the seat and being comfortable now this is my rock bros bag on the back they are going to send me their angway bag which looks almost really similar to this rock bros bag so i'm really curious to see if it is because it's a lot cheaper than this bag and so whenever I get that, I might be making a review on that. So if you're looking for a nice bag for your back, make sure you guys stick around and check that out. But overall, guys, pretty nice bike. Oh, I forgot to mention, and I actually forgot it had it. There is a little horn because the buttons hid way down here. I almost forgot about that. There is a little horn built into the headlight. It's not loud at all, but it's perfect for like the bike trail. You don't have to worry about scaring people with it like the last bike I, I think it was that i reviewed I, it was super loud and i was never going to use that on the bike trail and scare people but this one is toned down people weren't going to hear it so much in a car but it is nice to have that little horn there for the bike trail hey guys it's getting dark starting to rain i'm gonna try to book it back home but man this bike sure is no speed demon up hills tell you that This is the cadence on the pedals, about 22 miles per hour, not bad at all. I don't feel like I'm pedaling air, so that 13 tooth sprocket is pretty good for around 22 miles per hour. I really do like this regenerative braking for downhill guys. I mean, look how fast, look how fast I'm going. I'm holding the throttle down so the regen's not working. Let go. Hey man, it slows you down pretty good. No braking at all. Already down to 16. Let's do that one more time. Push it in to disable it. 23, 24, I'd be hitting the brakes right about now, but I'm gonna let the regen kick in. No brakes at all. Look at that, slow me right down. Going down that pretty steep part, down to 18, almost 17 miles an hour. So really loving the regen for downhill braking. Even if it doesn't put a whole lot of energy back in the battery, it's awesome for not having to use brakes going down long hills. So let's test out the max speed again. And I've seen tons of deer. I'm hoping one doesn't run out in front of me. Looking like 22 miles per hour. 
And here's another long hill. Go back down in the PAS2. Let it regen a little bit to slow me down. Really nice feature, guys. I wish all my bikes had this regen feature. Let's do it one more time. No brakes. 25, 26, 27. Let the regen kick in. Slow me down pretty quick. Very, very nice. And it looks like it gonna stop regening right about 13 miles per hour All right, let's see what kind of speed we can maintain up this hill about nine miles per hour so a little bit slow uphill but I am loving that regen feature I can't state that enough love it for the long downhills now if you're just on level ground I don't think the regen feature is gonna do a whole lot for you unless you have pretty long steep hills then it's nice to have but if you're on just level ground on a bike trail or something I don't see myself using it or needing to use it but definitely in my area with all these hills, it's pretty nice. So we're approaching the last long hill before my house. And this hill I've tested with all my other 750 watt bikes. A lot of them will pull me up it with throttle only. The area rider did really well. The snap cycle pulled me up it all the way with throttle only. Um, Magic cycle pulled me up it no problem throttle only. Now we are. 14 miles into this trip and down to 28% battery and that's with a load on it but it's pulled me up pretty good so far not too bad guys just not super fast so I'm gonna start pedaling here so I'm gonna have to test this hill out another day after I have the battery fully charged but it didn't do too bad all right guys so I made it back home without getting caught in the rain so my honest opinion about this bike overall it's a pretty good bike really really loving the regen features for those long downhill runs not having to use the brakes I would say the only limiting factor on this bike that I was a little bit disappointed with was the fact that it limits you on power when you are pedaling and only gives you full power when you're just using throttle because when I'm going up those hills I want full power in the pedal assist because I want to help it up those hills to prevent burning stuff out so I don't I'm hoping that they would change that in the future but in my opinion for my area where I live that's the biggest limiting feature of this bike so if you have a lot of hills in your area this might not be the bike for you and it did seem like it was lacking a little bit of power but I think if they change that and gave you the full power with pedaling it would definitely be a lot better riding experience so my legs feel really good right now i got a lot of exercise from this bike going up those hills because having to help it out with it limiting power and it was a little bit disappointing that it didn't reach the 28 miles per hour that amazon advertises however i normally don't go past 20 it would have been nice to see you still be able to to unlock it to a class 3 bike if you wanted to but it seems like with the speed all the way adjusted around 22 was the max I could hit so if you're on level ground this is going to be a great bike for a lot of you guys like I said if you have hills you might want to consider something else depends on what kind of hills you have in your area but overall we went 15 miles and I'm still at 56 percent battery life so that's pretty good on the battery life considering all those hills that we went up and it did gain a little bit of energy going back down so that was pretty cool i guess so you know how i said the battery level was at around 56 percent i tested it with a multimeter and it was actually at 47 volts which is less than 50 percent so what i did was i went in the settings 
in the advanced settings, go down to the battery where it says 48 volts. If you go into there, you could change the voltage for your different readings. Leave one set at 40. If you change five to 54.6, which is what the battery is when it's fully charged, that will make your reading a little bit more accurate. Five was actually set at 52. So I bumped that up to 54.6 and now the display reads about 47% which is pretty accurate now so overall the, after the 15 mile ride I have about 47% battery left and if you guys are wondering how bright the headlight is it's pretty bright as you can see there it does shine shine pretty far as well if you wanted it to so pretty nice headlight on the front as well so I hope you guys found this video interesting and helpful if you did, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and don't forget to leave a comment down below. It really helps my channel out a lot, guys. And don't forget to join me on Instagram. You can see some of the photos I took there with my uh, brand new iPhone 13 Pro. So I'm kind of excited. The pictures from that thing are way better than the iPhone 8 I had. So make sure you guys check those out on Instagram. And don't forget to check out the link down below if you guys are interested in checking out more details of this bike or picking one up. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if I do end up getting a coupon code for the bike, I will leave that down in the description as well. And just to let you guys know, if you do use that link, I will make a small commission at no extra cost to you, but that's what helps this channel um, get equipment for making these videos and making your viewing experience better, guys. So thanks for watching. and. I will see you guys around on the next one.